Welcome to the house of the Lord. Take a few moments and greet those around you and introduce yourself if you see a new face. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and today we will see Jesus display his power as God, and we will see how he did everything well for the sick and the lame and the deaf and the blind, and he does everything well for you and me too. Our opening hymn is number 418.
Our order for worship is morning praise, beginning with the verses at the bottom of page 45. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. We continue with Psalm 146 on page 120.
The first reading is from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. Tell those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not be afraid. Look, your God will come with vengeance. With God's own retribution, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unplugged. The crippled will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. Waters will flow in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The burning sand will become a pool and in the thirsty ground there will be springs of water. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the third chapter of Acts. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, an hour of prayer. A certain man who was lame from birth was carried there every day and placed at the temple gate, which is called Beautiful, so that he could beg for donations from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked them for a donation. Peter looked directly at him, as did John. Peter said, look at us. So the man paid close attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately the man's feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. He entered the temple courts with them, walking, jumping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the one who used to sit begging for money at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus left the region of Tyre again and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of the Decapolis. They brought a man to him who was deaf and had a speech impediment. They pleaded with Jesus to place his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd. He put his fingers into the man's ears, then he spit and touched the man's tongue. After he looked up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha, which means be opened. Immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was set free, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus gave the people strict orders to tell no one But the more he did so, the more they kept proclaiming it. They were amazed beyond measure and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 520.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters in him. There is something that seems you really can't escape these days. And that is people want to know your opinion. You get calls at inopportune times during the day. Could you please help us with a survey, with a poll? Or even you go to the doctor. And a week later, you get a letter in the mail that says, please fill out this form and tell us how we did and mail it back to us. Or if you do any business online, you buy something from eBay, an auction site, well, within a day or two, you'll get a, an email that says, please rate this seller. Or Amazon, it can be helpful sometimes, help you to figure out which thing you want to buy by customer reviews. And it can be kind of humorous, too. You look at the one-star reviews, people who didn't like what they got, and you read those and you see they didn't know what they were buying. They didn't know how to use it. I even saw one website where students can rate their college professors and write a review. Well, with that in mind, think for a moment about how does Jesus rate? Before the people, at the end of today's gospel, we see he rated highly. The people were beyond amazed, and they said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Whenever we see one of Jesus' miracles, we always have to remember the double purpose of each of his miracles. First, it was to help somebody in need, a few weeks ago, we had a whole series of lessons about the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus sees this crowd at the end of the day, people that had followed him, wanted to hear him. And at the end of the day, nobody had brought lunch except one boy with five small loaves and two fishes. So Jesus meets their need and feeds them all with food to spare. Here, a man who is deaf and who cannot speak is brought to Jesus, and we see not just Jesus taking care of his need, but also Jesus with compassion, with a kind of sign language telling the man what he is about to do. He puts his fingers in the man's ears and he touches his tongue as if to say, I'm going to open these and I'm going to loosen this. And then Jesus does, carries out the second purpose of his miracles. He shows who he truly is. Just like in the beginning, when God brought things to be by simply speaking a word, Jesus sets this man's life and his body right again by speaking a word. Ephatha, be opened. And here, the people understand, the people get it. He has done everything well, they said. Back after the feeding of the 5,000, we had kind of a very strange situation where the people saw the miracle and they ate the loaves and ate the fish, but they were only concerned about eating loaves and fish. And the fact that it was a miracle, or who is this who feeds the thousands, that was lost on them almost like a hardness of heart. They were so focused on more food. The fact it was a miracle was lost on them. 
But here they said, he has done everything well. Five stars out of five. For the blind and the deaf and the hungry and even for the dead, Jesus did everything well. Do you remember the fifth commandment? The way we learned it in catechism class many, many years ago for most of us. You shall not kill or you shall not murder. And then we all learned the explanation. Martin Luther's explanation where he summarizes everything the Bible says about preserving body and life. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and befriend him in every bodily need. So, how did Jesus help and befriend his neighbors in their bodily needs? He sees a crowd of over 5,000 hungry people. What does he do? He helps them in their bodily needs. He helps them all. A deaf and mute man is brought to Jesus. What does he do? He helps that man in his bodily need. He enables him to hear and enables him to speak. And throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus giving sight to the blind raising the dead, and even cleansing the lepers, people who had to be isolated from the rest of the community. He cleansed the lepers, really gave them their whole life back. That is how Jesus helped and befriended his neighbors in their need. Above and beyond, anything anyone else could do. Five stars out of five, I think that is a, a lousy way, a, a poor way to rate Jesus. He has done everything well, above and beyond, surpassing all expectations. And we think of then what Jesus taught about helping and befriending a neighbor. We think of his parable of the Good Samaritan. A man finds somebody laying in the ditch who fell among thieves, and even though that man probably wouldn't have helped him in love and compassion, he helps the man in need. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. Or his story about the rich man and Lazarus. That talks about, well, the, the heavenly implications, the cosmic implications of what happens when you don't help and befriend a neighbor in his need. He has done everything well with his life, with his teaching. Jesus helped and befriended his neighbors above and beyond. As an example of a good life, Jesus is certainly the very best, but he is an example that we can never follow completely. What can you do with five loaves of bread and two fish? Depending on the size of the bread and the size of the fish, you can make a few sandwiches. And that's about it. What can you do with a friendly touch? You can give a pat on the back. You can assure somebody that they're not alone. But that's about it. What could Jesus do with five loaves and two fish? What could Jesus do with a healing touch? Jesus is more than example. 
He is Savior. And the fact that He has done all things well and that He is our Savior, that means He has done all things well for you and me too. Because we have not always done everything well. Have you done everything well? Not at Jesus' level, but at your own. To be honest, I think we would have to say there are some things you or I do pretty well, and there are other things that you and I have failed at miserably. Some things are downright painful to think about, especially the times where we did not help or befriend a neighbor in need, either because we didn't know about it or we did help just to say that we helped as little as we could to make somebody stop asking. Or maybe we met a neighbor's need with indifference. Or maybe instead of kindness, we were cruel. Jesus has done all things well. His holiness covers our sin. His over and above obedience and holiness is what covers your sin and mine. We often talk about how Jesus took our sins away. It's in our worship songs. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. It's in a children's hymn I learned when I was very young. Jesus, Savior, wash away all that I have done wrong today. On the cross, Jesus took our sins on himself, but atonement and redemption and his work as our Savior was not just about taking something away, it was about giving us something. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul said, those who are baptized into Christ are clothed with Christ. He also wrote, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He gives us his holiness. We trust in him. We believe in him, and that holiness covers us. And so we don't have to doubt. We don't have to worry. How do I rate before God? Instead, we remember we have a Savior who has done all things well for us and that holiness, that excellence, that goodness is what covers us. And so when we think about God's favor, heaven, we never have to think, did I do enough? Am I good enough? Is God pleased? Because that righteousness is God's gift to us. Just as Jesus said to that thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. The thief knew we're getting what we deserve, death and punishment. But salvation, heaven is God's gift. Because the holiness of Jesus covers us, does that mean we don't have to worry about holiness? We don't have to worry about doing good. 
Well, that children's hymn also says, help me every day to be good and gentle more like thee. Jesus redeemed us from something, from sin and death and guilt and God's righteous anger. He redeemed us from something and he also redeemed us for something. He redeemed us to make us his new creation, to restore God's holy image in you and me that holy image that Adam and Eve lost. He came to be our Savior to make us his own so that really we don't belong to ourselves and we don't belong to the world. We belong to him with the purpose that we can live and serve him and serve our neighbor, and bring glory to him. That's what we pray about in the Lord's Prayer when we say, hallowed be your name, your will be done. He redeemed us so we could be his own and do his will in the world. And so, Jesus has done all things well, That also means his work as our Savior was not just in those last two days, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday when he was suffering, but it was in the 30-some years before that too. That was his work as our Savior with his active obedience That holy life is what made that death an innocent death. And that holy life is what covers you and me. He has done all things well. And through you and me, he continues to do all things well. Amen. Please rise and turn to page 48 in the front of the hymnal to we praise you, O God.
In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, great physician, all health and healing are gifts from your gracious hand. Show us your glory and bring healing to the sick, freedom to the oppressed, and joy to the weary. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. It has pleased Almighty God to call to himself the soul of Janet Pieper. Her Christian funeral was at Cornerstone Funeral Home yesterday evening. And a special prayer of thanksgiving for healing has been requested by my wife, Corrine Stratman, for recovery from a successful surgery. Lord God, you work all things for the good of those who love you. We pray for the family of Janet Pieper, whose soul you have taken to yourself. Assure them with your holy word that nothing, not even life or death or anything in all creation, can separate them from your love, which is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great physician of body and soul. We give you thanks and praise for your gifts of healing for Kareem. Help her to continue on the path of healing that she may rejoice in you, continue in a life of love and service, and let her light shine to bring glory to you. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 321.
Please note the announcements on the news sheet. Also today, we resume with coffee fellowship. So come downstairs, uh, enjoy a nice visit, have a few treats, uh, and catch up with one another. God's blessings on your week. Enjoy the perfect temperature today. <laughs>